Coming up, we take a break from basketball to focus on football's national holiday. We'll hear from several of the region's high school standouts that are celebrating signing day. There are three Dakotans taking their talents to the FBS. We'll break down those future Big Ten prospects. A number of other recruits have decided to continue their careers in the FCS. Our experts will let you know what that means for the programs in our region. All that and more just ahead on the Varsity Sports Signing Day Special. And how is everybody doing alongside Jason Andera? I'm Jay Elson. Well, it's finally here the day Friday night football stars across the country signed for the chance to play on Saturdays. Yeah, it's a lot like the emotion that you see on the NFL draft when players realize they get to continue their career to the next level. Mm -hmm. Well, same thing with high school players. They get to realize, hey, I'm going to play football on Saturdays. Nothing more special than that. It's going to be happy and fun to see these players announce where they're going. Absolutely. Well, Jason, as you know, recruiting is a full-time job for coaches and can be a stressful engagement for the players. We looked at the process from all angles during our latest episode of Midco Sports Magazine, and here's an excerpt from that that explains some of the challenges that both sides face. When I say the word recruiting, what comes to mind? <laughs> Year-round work, man. Lifeblood of, of your program. You've got to work at it every day. It's like shaving. If you don't do it, you look bad. It's a lifestyle. It's 24 hours, you know, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Everything is centered around recruiting. Everything. My, my entire day in the off-season from as soon as the season ends all the way until August 1, everything is centered around recruiting. It really never does stop. If you're doing it right, in my opinion, you'll constantly be recruiting. The recruiting process is very stressful. It's a lot of fun, don't get me wrong, but it's very, very stressful. Um, there are days where you, things aren't always going the way that you want them to, um, and coaches are telling you this thing, they're telling you that, come to our school, come to our campus here, and it gets, it gets kind of stressful. You know, they want you all to come to camp. It's a lot of traveling, um, a lot of visits, and there's some days where I, it gets to me and I just want to break down and cry. Like it, it gets that stressful. A common theme for players is the anxiety of waiting for just the right offer. Uh, I've told everyone like it was the hardest decision I've had to like make in my life and in, there's so it was just a really tough decision. Yeah, it, it was stressful because um, I didn't have a ton of offers. Um, it's just from some schools that I wanted to. Um, so I was happy when I got that Ohio State one and it kind of let go a little bit, so. Well, an interesting and eye-opening look at recruiting. Mm -hmm. uh, there's always so much more that goes into recruiting than meets the eye. I, I didn't realize how much it consumes coaches mm -hmm. and how stressful it is for the players. And if you didn't get a chance to see that full episode of Midco Sports Magazine, be sure to check your, your guide to see when it comes up next. Uh, really worth your time. Uh, and the investment yeah, to check fun. it out from all those different angles. Well, coming up, it was a big year for the Big Ten with three schools from that Power Five conference plucking talent from the Dakotas. We'll talk to the guys they got next. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by AE Tech Electrical Training Center in Rapid City. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Shields. And welcome back. Well, the Dakotas may not be the first stop for recruiters for big-time college football programs, but the region is clearly becoming a more frequent stop. Three players from the Dakotas signed to play for Big Ten schools in 2015, and here they are. Sioux Falls Roosevelt's Grant Schmidt, Fargo South's James Johannesson, and Parkston's Brady Reef. And Jason, let's take some time now to break down each one of these guys individually, starting with Schmidt. Well, Grant Schmidt, it's not often you get to play for a national champion. And the reason he was on radar for so many schools, including Ohio State, he's 6'7". He's got an unbelievable broad jump. He's got a great time in the shuttle. He was coached up very well at Roosevelt as far as his technique on the offensive line. The one thing they say he's got to work on is a little bit more upper body strength, and I'm sure that will come with uh, more time at Ohio State. In fact, he's already enrolled at Ohio State in the spring, or in this, this semester, so he's in classes right now. Uh, getting coached up on Ohio State, and we had a chance to talk to him before he left for Ohio State on what that offer meant to him. Um, it was just a great place, and uh, what they had to offer there is kind of unbeatable by pretty much any other school. 
um, I just will love it there, and I love the coaches there, so that's what I'm really looking forward to. All right, moving on, James Johannesson, one of the top talents the state of North Dakota has ever produced. Yeah, we are a high school show, and I don't think there's been a, a running back more fun to watch than James Johannesson over the last three years. Uh, he's been just dominant at the high school level, and he's going to take that talent and stay on the offensive side playing running back in the Big Ten. A tough task. Now, when he had to decide on colleges, he was looking at uh, Yale as an option. NDSU, of course, was an option. He grew up as a Bison fan, living in Fargo. You knew that was going to be one of his top picks. But when he visited the University of Minnesota, it definitely wowed him. But he knows there's going to be some stiff competition next year in the Big Ten. Obviously, it's like the Big Ten, and I want to, I really want to get a shot, you know, to start for them. So I'm doing everything I can, you know, morning workouts and working out two, three times a day just to get ready for it. So I can come in and be prepared, you know, because there's going to be two other running backs and then older guys too, you know, obviously, to compete with for running backs. Now, Brady Reef was the first out of this group to decide on his future home. I think his connections at the University of Iowa probably played a role in that. But let's talk about what makes him such an intriguing Big Ten prospect. Well, what makes him intriguing is just, again, raw athleticism. This guy has it, and he combines that with pure toughness. Like, this guy is nose to the grindstone tough. He does not uh, take any cor cut any corners. He works hard. Um, his brother, of course, Riley Reef, is the, the offensive tackle at the with the Detroit Lions right now, and he kind of fits that same mold. He's quiet. He gets to work, and uh, he's going to start out as a defensive player for Iowa. But who knows what they'll do with him? Maybe they move him over to the offensive side of well as well, just like his brother Riley. Yeah, who knows? Uh, but uh, certainly. A very talented young man yes. could have a very good career there in Iowa City. Well, a number of talented players are going to continue their careers a little closer to home. We're going to let you know which ones are headed to either North Dakota or North Dakota State. No. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by AE Tech Electrical Training Center in Rapid City. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Shields. And hey, welcome back. Well, it's time now to focus on North Dakota, namely the state's two FCS schools. And we're going to start by taking a look at some of the new UND signees. This was the first full year of recruiting for Coach Bubba Schweigert. And he said he was going to make North Dakota a priority, Jason. And he has followed through on that. UND has secured more in-state talent than they have in quite some time, and that includes one player that wasn't even thinking about playing college football until last fall. That's right. We're talking about Brad Heidelbaugh of rugby. He was looking for options to play college basketball, but when UND got serious about bringing him on board for football, he listened. To be honest, starting out the summer, I wanted to play, uh, starting out the summer, I wanted to play a basketball more, but I injured my foot and didn't really get to play much AAU basketball, and uh, I kind of just uh, I talked to the UND coaches a lot, and I, I really liked them, and uh, I think UND's are going to be a really, really good fit. Aiden and Tristan Hartness were a big part of Davies' championship success last season, and they both hope that their future at UND will be just as successful. And when these dynamic twins set out to find their college home, they knew they would make their decision together. We're, it's, it's a package deal, if that's how you want to call it. You know, we're... We're going to go somewhere where the team wants both of us and we saw in that place at UND. So, I mean, we're, we're always playing in the backyard, him so involved in here. Not even me song to him, I mean, when we were younger. But, you know, it doesn't switch like that anymore. But it's pretty special having my, like, being able to see that, uh, being able to say that my brother and I will be going to the same school and, you know, continuing on, you know, playing together. All right, Jason, let's take a look now at the full list of in-state recruits that UND secured. Yeah, UND got some guys from home. That was the goal of Bubba Schweigert. He said, we're the University of North Dakota. We want to have kids from North Dakota, and they succeeded. I talked to Bradley Heidelbaugh of rugby. He's a 6'5 guy, and he's planning on starting at quarterback at least, but is open to the idea of maybe playing receiver. Wants to play offense either way. And then Aiden Hartness, a great career with Fargo Davies. He's played quarterback since he's been a fourth grader and said, I'm going to give that a shot as long as it will take me. Um, he knows that maybe he'll be a junior or senior before he gets a legitimate shot at earning that spot, but he's got his mind set on it. And the other twin, Tristan Hartness, has been a dynamic receiver. He plans to stay at receiver, but knows he has to get a little bit faster. And then you see the rest of these recruits, 
a couple of them, um, Elijah Grady from Newtown, he'll be able to step up pretty quick with that frame and that size on the offensive line. Luke Keller's done a great job at Bismarck for years. Very physical guys on this list. I think UND did a good job. All right, let's turn our attention now to North Dakota State, Jason. The Bison have built a dynasty with help from a lot of regional talent. So they just went ahead and added a bunch more. Yeah, and one of those players that is hoping to help carry on the tradition is Fargo South standout Ty Brooks. The fans and the, the winning tradition is just crazy. So, And I'm, I'm from here, so it'll be nice to have my mom watch me. And didn't want to go out to Wyoming. I mean, I like the coaching staff, but didn't want to travel all the way out there. So uh, It's pretty crazy. I used, to, I used to talk about it with my mom and my friends. We all, we all used to talk about playing college football, and it's a reality now, so it's pretty cool. And to help us break down some of the in-state recruits for North Dakota State, we bring in Midco SN analyst Brian Sean. And Brian, let's start with Brooks. He did a little of everything in high school. Offense, defense, special teams. What's he going to focus on at NDSU? Yeah, I think the, the major focus for him is going to be uh, on the defensive side of the ball as a defensive back. I think that's where North Dakota State foresees him, uh, especially early in his career. He can be a good special teams guy because he's a pretty good tackler and uh, has great speed. So I think uh, North Dakota State, once they get some weight on him, uh, really foresees him being one of those guys that can maybe be a slot nickel or even uh, play on the outside a little bit as corner. So I think they're excited about the potential he has because he certainly has very good feet. All right, how about Brock Robbins? We saw him play on one of the most dominant defenses in nine-man history. What are they looking forward to watching Brock do in Fargo? You know, Brock Robbins is actually uh, a specimen. I think he's a little raw, uh, but when you look at him play, he has all those intangibles you look for. He's a really tough runner inside. I'm not exactly sure where North Dakota State is going to want to use him. I think they could use him in a variety of different areas, but they're going to probably have to wait on camp until he gets on campus until they determine what role they want him to play. They might start him off as a linebacker and see if he fits in that role, but um, when you talk about a guy that is just a north-south tough, tough guy, um, when you watch Brock Robbins play, he, he's got a lot of those things that you look for in terms of toughness. And a North Dakota kid that probably went under the radar a little bit is going to have to get you know two steps faster. But again, again, another kid that if he puts the puts the work in, is going to have an opportunity to play and succeed. Even as a walk on, North Dakota State's had a lot of success bringing in local products like Joe Hag and Brian Schatz from Wisconsin. Those guys were walk-ons, and they've turned themselves into starters, and not just starters, but very valuable players that play significant reps. All right, so Brooks, Robbins, take a look at the rest of the list here. Yeah, and another big name on this list, Derek Tuska. This is a guy whose brother plays at NDSU right now, was probably the first commit of this group. They've been had, you know, they've really had their eyes on Tuska for a long time. He's, a, he's an athletic specimen. He does a great job on the basketball court, and that athleticism definitely translate to what he can do on the football field. And like his brother, great size. Too, great coming size, out of high great school. speed, great attention to detail. Absolutely. All right, well, more to come on this Varsity Sports Signing Day special. South Dakota and South Dakota State each found plenty of talent in their own backyard. We'll talk coyotes and jackrabbits when we come back. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by AE Tech Electrical Training Center in Rapid City. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Shields. And welcome back to the Varsity Sports Signing Day Special. The recruiting battles in South Dakota, Jason, have gotten more and more intense since the state's two biggest schools moved to the FCS level, and this year was no different. Two players that helped Sioux Falls Lincoln win a state title at the Dakota Dome last fall are going to continue their careers in that very same building. Wide receiver Nickel Myers and Defensive end Dylan Arndt signed Wednesday to play for Joe Glenn and the Coyotes. I knew it as soon as I visited. I, I really connected with the guys and uh, the coaches especially. I thought all the coaches were good guys. Um, I feel like they treated people fairly. That's what I'm looking for in a school where I want to go. I always felt like I've been a Coyote ever since I was a little kid. I've been going to their camps and you know, it really my only Division I offer. So but I wouldn't want any other way. Well, Jay, I know you keep a close eye on the Coyotes. How did they do this year in that in-state recruiting battle? Well, you win some, you lose some, right? I mean, there's some guys that, that got away, guys like Alex Wildy, Brady Hale, and Taron Christian that 
that are they're gonna they chose the schools in the north and they're gonna be, they're gonna be jackrabbits. But um, I can tell you this: the three guys they got from South Dakota, they're very happy about, it. and that's of course Nickel Myers, Dylan Arntz, and then Nathan Bird, an offensive lineman out of Sioux Falls of Gorman. So these three guys, well, while they li would have liked to have a, an even bigger class from South Dakota. They're stoked that they got these guys coming in to be Kyle. All right, so for these high school athletes who played in South Dakota, mm -hmm. will any of them be making an immediate impact next year? Tough to say. Uh, Joe Glenn has always said that the way you build a program is by redshirting your freshmen. So that's the idea coming in, but that's the idea for all these guys coming in. That, in a perfect world, they would get a year just to get ready and acclimated to the college game, but that's you just don't, you're not always afforded that luxury. And so if these guys come in and they can help the Coyotes get better now, they're going to let them do it. And certainly you look at a guy like Nickel Myers, uh, one thing South Dakota has is a lot of receivers. One thing they don't have at that position is a lot of size. So Nickel is an intriguing guy because he's six foot four. Uh, and we saw what he could do last year in his first real full year of varsity competition where he was kind of the, the main guy, 66 catches over 1,100 yards, 12 touchdowns. And then on the defensive side, Arts, they love his attitude on the field. They love the way that he plays uh, the game. Uh, he, he's kind of going to be that defensive end, outside linebacker hybrid. Um, but if he's ready to go, he'll go. Ideally, though, they'd like him to sit a year and get ready to go. All right. Well, it's going to be fun to watch the Yotes. But at South Dakota State, they're seeing some benefits mm -hmm. from their new facilities. They attracted several in-state players, two from Sioux Falls Roosevelt, and two from Brookings that we'll hear from now. Uh, one of the biggest things with me was uh, I kind of want to stay close to my family and because uh, I have a lot of uh, relatives that live in uh, Minnesota, uh, Pipestone, Minnesota, and uh, I just kind of wanted to stay close to them so they could come and kind of go on the ride with me and come to my games, watch me play, and then uh, just meeting the coaching staff. Uh, it was really genuine coaching staff, really liked them. Uh, it really seemed like you were more than just a football player there. So uh, that, that was probably the biggest thing for me. Some of the Big Ten schools, the Big 12 schools, were uh, wanting me to play a different position, and maybe if they would have offered me, I would have considered it. But uh, I kind of wanted to stay at quarterback, too. So I'll be d working both wide receiver and kicking butts. Um, I think it all depends really on how SDSU wants me or what they want me to do. So I'll be doing both positions, both skills, uh, improving. But uh, I think ultimately they're going to decide on kind of what they want me to do and if I'm able to uh, beat out the other kids for kicking and whatnot. So um, it, it's kind of my decision, but not really. It's mainly SHU's decision. Until a few weeks ago, I didn't even know I was going to be at SUCU. Um, it came down to I had a conversation with the running backs coach, um, and we kind of hit it off um, we, very similar. Um, and so that kind of altered my decision and made me want to stay home. Um, as well as my family and friends and everything. I've already left once going to Florida. And so I think that um, staying home is the right decision for me. I've been talking to SCCU since uh, I've been a sophomore, ever since we've been going to their camp every summer and then uh, their individual camp as well. So I've kind of had it in the back of my mind. I want to be a Jackrabbit all along, so. Uh, it's pretty awesome actually, because uh, you know, it's our, it's our home state. So we're going to be representing really well. All right, now we bring in Tom Neiman from Jackrabbit Journal to talk about some of these new Jackrabbits. And first of all, Tom, how much of a difference are the new facilities making in these recruits' minds? I think it uh, obviously makes a huge difference. They've got the indoor facility already done there. They'll, they'll have uh, the new football stadium done by 2016 uh, next year. And it, obviously, kids love that kind of thing. They love the uniforms and everything else that goes with a uh, college program. But I think more than that, it is the coaching consistency with Stig and the coordinators that he has kept there. And then most of all, the Jacks have won nine games the last three years in a row. They've been to the playoffs the last three years in a row. I think being part of that winning program is uh, probably the biggest factor right now for these kids. All right, well, let's talk about the group that they just inked from South Dakota. Did they address any immediate needs for the from these in-state players, like uh, maybe quarterback, for instance? I, quarterback's going to be a tough draw, especially for Taron Christian, uh, if you talk about him. I think it's going to be tough for any freshman uh, from South Dakota or otherwise to get on the field for the Jackrabbits next year. They're just at that point in the program where they don't need to play any of these incoming freshmen. So at uh, quarterback and at running back, a lot of guys coming back. There's going to be stiff competition for Christian and Mikey Daniel at those spots. Uh, Brady Hale and Chase Vinatieri, the Jacks graduated a punter and a kicker they're going to have to fill those spots so Vinatieri and Brady Hale I could see them getting on the field uh, right away if any of those other kids could play defensive end and rush the quarterback they could play right away that's another need for the Jacks but uh, quarterback and running back are going to be tough for anybody to break into as a freshman next year 
Well, it's uh, always fun to see these high school stars stay in state and mm -hmm. play. And South Dakota State got volume this year. They They've got a lot of kids from in state. And you look at the list and, and some great athletes. We saw Lorenzo Williams shine on the field at the Dakota Dome in the 9A championship game. He's going to be able to do that on the defensive side. Looking forward to watching him. Uh, Mikey Daniel and Dayton Bird both lit it up for the Bobcats, got them all the way to the championship game. A couple other fun players to watch in the coming years. Uh, South Dakota State doing a great job keeping state players in state. All right, well, we are running out of time. We're going to wrap things up with a look at some of the players that chose Division II when we come back. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by AE Tech Electrical Training Center in Rapid City. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Shields. Well, a lot of Friday night heroes want to keep playing football. And while they can't all go Division I, there are still plenty of quality options at the Division II and the NAIA level in this region. We don't have time to go through the entire list right now, but you can find that on our blog at MidcoSN.com. For now, Jason, why don't you let people know where some of your favorite high school players are heading? Like you said, so many players. I mean, that's one thing coaches say is if you don't get a player, there's a lot of other players to go to. And here's just a few of them that really shined on Friday nights. Noah Krebs inked early on to you, Mary. He's going to help bring some nastiness to that defense for the Marauders. And then Danny Stosh, he's been running the ball since he was a sophomore for Fargo Shanley. Stays close to home at uh, Moorhead. And then in South Dakota, Jake Como, one of the best quarterbacks we've seen. He's only about 6'1 and a half, 6'2, and maybe if he was 6'4, he would be a Division I guy. But Northern State gets to reap those benefits. And then Luke Loudenberg, who set pretty much every record there was in nine-man football in South Dakota, will continue his career. Even though he's, he's short, he's going to be running the ball with Dakota Wesleyan, and, and they're really happy about that. And remember to check out a uh, bunch more recruits again at the blog at MickOSN.com. Huh. All right, that's going to do it for us. Congratulations to all the athletes who realized their dream today. Thanks for sharing that experience with us. And best of luck in the future. For Jason Andera, I'm Jay Elson. Thanks for watching this Varsity Sports Signing Day Special.